morning, ah, afternoon, dude, this, evening. This is sick, huh? We're starting to elevate our game a little bit here with the uh, with some graphics. Shout out to Mr. Fluck. Yeah, shout out us to up Fluck. With some, some cool graphics here for the cast. Mm -hmm. Fluck with the overlay. Push to talk there really quick so I could talk freely with Mr. Viss. And uh, we're live today. All right, ladies and gentlemen, happy Friday. Freaking watch my episode three now, right? Is it, are we up to? I'm going to start record. I got to get my recordings going. I start throwing these on the on the socials and on the YouTube. Yeah, for sure. All right, we got a we got a couple things to talk about. Viss and I have been talking this week a little bit here and there. We're definitely going to go over some UFC. As we got 285 tomorrow, the return of John Jones. Mm -hmm. So we got ourselves some UFC discussion to go over. But maybe we got a couple other uh, topics that we can discuss before we jump into the meat and the potatoes. And uh, I don't know. Let's roll it off with this. It's like okay, so big news this week. Uh, we all know of this kick website kick has been you know in this building stage over the past month or so and then i guess this week they uh officially have you know signed their first exclusive creator being <coughs> Aiden ross um what do you what are your general thoughts on this vis and like you know do you think that this could be a step in the right direction for the website to start locking in some audience and like customer retention do you think that it's still just a fizzle that's going to eventually pop what are this is what's this is 411 on the whole kick situation and where it's heading right now um dude i honestly i haven't even gone over to kick right now like i'm, actually, I'm gonna go over here during the stream for the yeah, first yeah, time check it out i gotta be careful though because i've heard of some wild shit going yeah, on over yeah, here make, make sure i've heard of some muted yeah i play captures yeah, you know what yeah, the hell. I, none of that none it's of the that. wild west out there none bro. Of that. <laughs> They got, so, they got, they do it all you know, I thought it was real interesting the very first time from my, when I seen this, just like how much they tried to make it look like Twitch, which I mm. think does make sense because mm. I guess it Mixer in some ways did as well. Mm. Um, like I'm over here, top live categories, slots and casinos, number one, just chatting, pools and hot tubs is number three, Hearthstone, music, Apex, hold up, let me see, I'm, I'm like looking around for the first time. Yeah. You know what's yeah, interesting? I'm, I'm looking at it with you right now too. So I'm I'm, I'm seeing some people that are have are streaming to both uh, Twitch and Kick right now actually. At there, the same time. Yes, right? there's some there's some people that I'm seeing right now. And then I wonder, yeah, I wonder. I feel like a lot of people just do things like that and see how long they could get away with it before like before they get a warning, you know? Uh -huh, yeah, before it, they it, get it, a warning it, or something. Exactly, they catch you and they're like, okay, okay, I won't do that. But yeah, dude, that there's you know. I've been very traditional in that approach where I try not to cross those lines too much and handle it more like a like a like a like a job, I guess you could say, or like a business. Uh -huh. But sometimes I do I do kind of be like, dang, some of these some of these streamers they do got some cojones with trying with with walking this fine line with that double streaming. But first things, I see the same thing when you look at that website. One, it looks like Twitch, and like you said, what's usually like the number one complaint about these other streaming platforms is the UI. So it's like maybe Kick was like, you know what? We should have something pretty similar that's going to like remind the viewer that like it's, it's like Twitch. Right. And you see that with the live categories too, how it's, you know, it seems like that. And I, maybe this is because of the whole train wreck behind it. And obviously now with Aiden Ross being like their first signed like large creator, it's not, you know, that surprising to see things like slots and just chatting being right. at the tippity top with like uh, there's not even uh, for anyone who's not looking on it with this and i at the moment like the highest gaming channel right now is hearthstone on kick.com has 982 mm -hmm. viewers and like one of those streamers in there has 960 viewers so like that's probably the first time hearthstone has been the most viewed game on a website in a long time no yeah offense to that the hearthstone crazy, players actually. but it does seem like that the gaming side of this website is far behind which is this whole other like what do you call it? Light, lifestyle like would you consider slots like light uh, just chatting lifestyle i guess gambling content but right um god dude i'm like, looking at it right now like how many streams are even live over here if you go through like every if you just see every game like we hit every game i mean god this yeah. it's only like seven categories and one thing that i've seen too is, is like when you go into like a category like 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 a popular game like apex for instance it's interesting to see that the largest streamer on there only has 200 viewers so like do you think that what we'll see with kick is a lot of smaller streamers that are trying to tap into that you know discoverability of a new website and maybe try to become like the first pioneers of the website or do you think that it, they're they're gonna kind of just have the same 
the same like aka i guess to ask this better to you do you think there's going to be more discoverability on this platform for a small streamer than against on, like on twitch well absolutely if you're a small streamer right now the, the, that's the, the big thing when uh, people are like, oh, what, what what platform should I stream to? Like, Twitch is probably one of the worst platforms you can stream to if you're a brand new streamer. Like, I would, be, I would be streaming to, I mean, if you had a TikTok, 100% I would be streaming to TikTok. I would stream, if you were trying to actually get exposure, like streaming to something like Kick would actually be a really good idea if you're a brand new streamer. Yep. Because there's, I mean, you could have 19 viewers right now and be the third most watched stream on this platform. So if yep. anybody's going over there and they're wanting to see Apex... Like you have such a higher chance of getting discovered compared to Twitch, where Twitch you're buried down what 200, 300, 400, 500 streamers oh God, deep. Yeah, like you're never game, getting you're found that way. Yep. You're never getting fa- your channel's never getting found. Like you have a better shot streaming on YouTube and hopefully getting picked up by like the algorithm or something if you've been pumping out videos over there as well than right. uh, than streaming on Twitch. It's like one of the the exposure on Twitch is terrible, even for streamers our size. You know what I mean? Yeah. Even for streamers our side, we've been at this for You're how many wrong. years, how many viewers we got. And even for us, the exposure on Twitch is terrible. Like my, I will have more people find my stream by streaming to TikTok or by putting out a YouTube short or any of that than streaming yep. to yep. Twitch. So if it's something early like this in the early days of kick, like in there, this platform grows at all, even if it doesn't grow at all. Like, boom, you could be streaming to both platforms right now, and then maybe some people find you from Kick, and then they come over to your Twitch after that. Um, to kind of get back into it, though, you asked specifically because they had signed Aiden Ross, and apparently, you know, from the talks of things, apparently this is the biggest contract anyone's ever gotten. Um, yep. It's – I don't know. I don't think it's – like, I, in the long run, I don't see this working out for them. Like, I don't, don't see how they're going to possibly bring – enough people to this platform in order for it to succeed unless they just like start buying everyone you know like they're gonna have to put so much money into it uh in the beginning to have any shot at this working out in my opinion what what do you think about that Uh, i think that that's also you know one of the like the core problems that they probably will face also is the way that they're doing the whole revenue side of things you know, I mean, this we've learned from some other articles that, you know, operating a website like this is not, you know, cheap. It definitely Absolutely. takes some money to to operate. And, you know, unless they've just set aside a bunch of money to just kind of like sink into it in the first year and just take it at a loss. Uh-huh. It will be interesting to see, like, how long can it survive with this whole style of like being very beneficial to the creator and not so beneficial to the website. Mm-hmm. Um that that'll definitely be exactly interesting to see and i guess until it starts getting some more traction like it's either gonna you know i see it going the same way like i either seeing it being like a slow climb that never really amounts to nothing or it's gonna i see it being the other thing which is like a huge you know a huge burst after like a bit of a climb like they signed Aiden Ross they'll get a lot of this younger viewership mm-hmm. heading over there they mm-hmm. might get a bit of an influx and everyone's like oh my god kiss your and then like one day we're gonna wake up and be like oh kick has uh, filed for chapter 11 yep. you know, bankruptcy or yep. something like that like I wouldn't be surprised yep. if it if it either just like stays small and never grows or it goes viral and then fizzles out because they don't have enough support uh-huh. um to to bring it up but i did want to talk about the two things that you just mentioned too because i thought those were good talking points is, is discoverability on twitch like i've even been thinking that as somebody who's been doing a lot of variety this year and kind of branching out of that 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 web of the PUBG that i've been so known for over the past couple of years like i find myself even sitting in a new game category with you know two 250 300 viewers like my discoverability even at that size is uh, you know relatively low uh-huh. you know and 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 you know, in retrospect, where I look at it, we're like, okay, my numbers have been a lot higher than that in the past. That's a lot of viewers for somebody to get on Twitch, regardless, yep. you know, of the status previously or no status previously. Yes. So to think that you could even climb all the way to that two, 250, 300 average viewership range and still be struggling with the discoverability yep. aspect of the platform, it really does kind of make you go like, dang, like, what do you need to do? on a platform like this in an industry like this to really get discovered and you know to kind of have that continual growth progressing rather than it coming in like these spurts every couple years like big boom big boom and then i guess i really wonder like 
and this is part of the journey and i guess you got to look at some people who've been doing it for a long time like the 10-year guys like the tims and the nick Merks, and mm -hmm. you know uh, maybe they've all had that kind of you know maybe that's just part of the grind you know you go through these times where your discoverability is lower other times it's higher and you got to capitalize when it's higher and you know really dig deep when it's lower and not give up but that that's a great point to bring up the whole discoverability thing and 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 to loop that in with the kick discussion i saw that train wrecks made a tweet today or yesterday something like that that said that they're working on a TikTok style algorithm for clips so that way your clips can go more viral on the website and get noticed better oh my god you know that, what that's, that's actually such that's a, a good idea. idea oh my right? god that is such a so crazy idea of Twitch's stale clip system and you Bro. not being able to see good clips oh unless you watch that stream. So they're going to take the content that's being made on the website and they're going to try to make it more viral on their website. It's almost like if Twitch did something with the VODs instead of us having they to put need the VODs to on do freaking that. YouTube. They need you to know? do that right now. That is like one of the best ideas of all time. Okay, imagine this. Okay, imagine this, everybody. Go on this journey with me. You go on to Twitch, right? Or like they go this on. Is, you go on to Twitch. And then at the very home, home page, just like you would see on YouTube, right, where you can, like, scroll down on your YouTube feed and it has the shorts. Or on Instagram, yep. the same thing. It has the reels, right? Boom. What if you got the reels right there on Twitch, right? And then they're playing, but they're for people that are live right then. So, like, you're going through and then maybe a, a clip, a reel, like, right, for Twitch, boom, is, like, going viral right then. It's getting shared out there to tons of people. And then you're you're live right then it says this person's live right now you want to watch their stream boom you click in they go into the stream. like think about how crazy that would be that'd be awesome that think about how crazy that would be that'd be such It'd be an like the thing. effect of the front page i know as someone like i'm sure you've been on the front page at least uh -huh. once or twice yeah i know it happened like some people get a little more lucky I, I feel like if you've been in the game long enough you've probably been there once or twice and like that that would kind of have like the front page effect so for those who don't know like when your streams on the front page the amount of discoverability that you get from people just like clicking on to twitch is like insane like you'll have thousands of thousands of viewers and it's like i think kind of like what this is saying is kind of similar like that if you were to go on a twitch and on the main page they have a highlight section and you're like oh my god this this clip i just saw was insane and then they're like oh by the way the streamer's live check it out boom that would be something yeah like, you know discoverability through the roof and like you know what i mean then like so many more people that's i mean th that's such a popular form of content right now obviously with tiktok and reels and i mean that is so heavily consumed imagine you go to twitch it's the same thing on twitter you just be like popping through and be like you went through an, enough clips you're like this one's really cool i've never seen this guy before he seems like he has a cool personality let's check him out boom jump into his stream right then i that sounds like such a good idea for them to implement and that's like been one of the biggest problems with this the the platform for so long is the discoverability side of it for people like that could change the game that could change the game for twitch you could see way more people streaming to twitch after that hundred percent and then like you would love to see twitch i know we just touched on it briefly too with the whole vod situation like if twitch would just create some way to like put the vods in a different style of format on the website we don't have to upload anything to youtube anymore people can just go and look for these highlights or whatever right there on twitch but maybe youtube's too ingrained within the twitch style of content creation to kind of remove that from there but i do agree that overall like those are probably the types of things that a website like kick is going to have to do to yeah. stay in the forward you know progress with the ingenuity because if they're not doing that you know people in chat are bringing it up right now like w what is going to draw somebody to kick Mm -hmm. You know, the, you know, we've seen that well, the big influencer thing doesn't always do it because we saw what happened to Mixer after they grabbed Ninja, who was arguably like the largest content creator. Like, I, I don't know. He had some crazy levels back then with the Fortnite viewership and the prime subs and all that. Like it, he didn't even have the power to pull people over to Mixer or nor did Shroud. So it's like we've seen that they kind of went that same route, which yeah. is concerning. But then you see a tweet like this come out and you're like, dang, maybe this ingenuity that they're going with here could actually make a difference yeah well the, the the problem with that is is how long before twitch just takes that if they do actually do that exactly. now, now, now this idea twitch is out, now you a, know the problem with that though twitch. yeah well yeah see that it, that's what should be happening but twitch misses the ball on this stuff so often so many times that you know they could easily just let this slide forever here's the big question though we kind of talked about this already like how can they if something seems too good to be true then it usually is how the heck can they true. forever I mean, it's not going to be forever. 90, 10, right? A nine, it's ninety-five five, right? Isn't it? Or is Ooh, it ninety ten? Yeah, it's ninety ten or 95, a ninety-five 90, five 90 split. So, yeah. for anyone that doesn't understand, 
uh, if you subscribe to someone on Kick, 95% of the revenue is going to streamer, which, I mean, that that's amazing, right? Like, I feel that would be a great thing. But the question is, how can that be sustainable if Twitch is doing something where they're doing 50-50 cut with most people, right? And they can't um, sustain it. And they, they have they all the viewership. And they're ran by uh, Amazon. Amazon's going to be tr- – like, when it comes to business, Amazon knows business, right? Um, they're going to be trying to make the company as profitable as possible. Um, right. And so if they're st- – because Twitch up to this point has still been losing money. Like last year, they yeah. still lost money. Yeah. So we'll see after this year because, you know, they changed things up. They're putting more ads on the platform and right and whatnot. Uh, let's see after this year if that was still the case. You know, we, sh- we should be a- actually seeing that pretty – pretty soon we should be able to know whether or not twitch was actually profitable for like the final quarter of this year um and if they're not how could kick ever get to the point that they're going to be profitable and have the money forever that they're just going to continue to be able to do this like it's just not going to be possible yeah and you know and then when you look at it too you look at twitch backed by amazon because then people are like oh well well kick is backed by steak and steak has tons of money well it's the same thing with amazon and uh and twitch you know and, and amazon being you know one of the Uh, maybe even the largest business in the world right now i'm not even exactly sure but you know so it's like you see exactly what this is saying that there's already a website struggling with these issues that is already backed by one of the largest companies in the world and now you have kick here which is like kind of you know someone made the comparison in chat that uh, you know i don't know how much you follow golf maybe some people in the chat do but like kick is like the live tour and twitch is like the pga you know we kind of like see it like an emerging market like that and you know it's like the live tours the ones that's ran by like uh, the saudis right yeah it's funded by like the the saudi (laughs) like the oil oil princes and whatnot they're just like yeah just buy them all just buy them all i want them playing in my league gambling you know they're like all right we got throw them a couple billion it's all right i got like here's 10 mil for aiden ross yeah like like, throw them a couple billion because we got like seven you know we got like a hundred trillion dollars that we're just printing so from all me, the oil. Let me throw an idea out there and let me see if I could kind of try to loop this all in together with this thought process that I uh-huh. got here. Do you think that years ago when Twitch went the route of, so I feel like, I, I man, I can't remember when it came out, but whenever the affiliate program rolled out, right? So they, yep. they came out with this affiliate program and it seemed like it during this time, a couple years back that Twitch was trying to monetize streaming for individuals. Mm-hmm. earlier in their content creation journey right, right, than, right than it used to be right for those of you who don't know or maybe you're newer to twitch back in the day before they had the affiliate program there was only partners and to get partnered you had to have like 500 average viewers or something crazy i mean people were using patreon to get subs like it wasn't just all on twitch so i think twitch responded to all of this outsourcing the subscriptions by making the affiliate program that way even if you're not a partner you could still monetize your channel etc cetera, etc cetera. Do you think at this time that maybe then it was a good idea, but in the long run, it has hurt the discoverability because Twitch has their focus now has right. Obviously, Switch is like we got to make more money because we're paying more people money rather than helping people go viral and then them making us money. You know what I mean? Um, so I wonder now if like this stage in a couple years after if they've kind of looked at it like, dang, we should have focused on viral Nate, like content and discoverability more than early monetization because a lot of these people get these affiliates or whatever they do it for like a month they make like 50 bucks and then they're like well why would i do this for 50 bucks i'm just gonna go do whatever i was doing before this so it's almost like they they give this out too easily you know which mm. has created that kind of style uh, uh, you know or maybe not I, I maybe i didn't make any sense there I, no I don't know. the the <laughs> biggest problem with the affiliate is um that they limited you from streaming on other platforms after that. That exactly. was the, that was the huge. Pr- yeah. So, I mean, if the, you could still have the exact same affiliate program, but you just don't make it so that people are locked into just Twitch because the, if, you you, you're, if you're a small, uh, small streamer, a small creator and you're on Twitch and you sign an affiliate deal, um, I mean, I would get out of that right now. Really and I would idea. break that yeah. shit right now. I'm going to get out of that. I'm going to stream to every single platform. Why are you streaming just to Twitch? You just signed yeah. a, you just killed Good your talk. channel. You just killed your own channel by signing an affiliate deal with Twitch. You're making now a 50, 50 split. Congratulations. But your discoverability just went to zero because now you're locked yep. into a platform that has no discoverability mm. when you should be streaming. If I'm a small streamer, I'm already streaming to kick right now. They're in the talks right now. Like, why are you, if you're a small streamer, why are you not streaming to kick right now? 
You are an True. idiot. You're being an why idiot. Are why are you on, not streaming to Kick right kick now? On why are you not streaming to YouTube right now? Why are you not streaming to Facebook Gaming? Why are you not trying to build up a TikTok so you can stream to TikTok? Why are you you should be streaming to every single platform that you possibly can, especially something like Kick right now? Because guess what? We're talking about it right now because it's in the news sphere. So people are over there checking it out just like we are Clicking right now. And you have on. more of an opportunity to get found over there. You will never get found over here on Twitch unless like an absolute miracle of a miracle happens and somehow like some way you go viral and like yes. let's let's be real that's hard on twitch it's near viral. impossible like that's that's like winning the it's like winning the lottery like it's they like don't you, make games like they used to so you can't even go viral from fucking owning people in video games anymore no. you know like five years ago you you hit a sick shot you went viral <laughs> yeah. nowadays no. you got to do something ludicrous like yep. you got to go far left far right you got to just say something controversial like yeah. that's how it seems like yeah. you go viral nowadays on twitch like it's mm -hmm. no more like holy shit look at this clip this guy just three headshots in a half a second in valorant or counter-strike or PUBG. insert your favorite game you know, right? I 100% agree. Now you got to go viral because you're, you know, I'm just going to go out there. You're in a hot tub. You're spinning a slot. You're doing yeah. something controversial. You know, like you're, you're creating drama. You're, you're talking about the most polarizing shit that you could possibly exactly. think of. Yeah. Like it's, it's crazy how that's happened, huh? It's like everything has gone that way. And like, you have to really be. I, I, I guess that's not I guess I guess that's not every because I have noticed like there's some streamers that I have noticed where like they have came up with a good idea and they did they did do like have oh, that definitely but it, it's gone so much more that way than like more than it ever was in the beginning like back when I started streaming on Twitch in 2015 I think you started what 2017 ish where you like were really yeah, yeah, consistent about 2017 and yep, like yep. even just back then it's stuff's changed so much it's kind of crazy way it's kind of crazy how much it's man. changed and, um, and it's hard yeah. to explain that unless you were there you know kind of at that forefront before that big you know it started getting big in 2018 and then you combine it with the whole covid thing like really from 2018 to like 2020 2021 it was pretty crazy and then like yeah it, it is definitely like way different in the way that just things work and that kind of like i was just thinking about it you know like that's why i, I feel like that's this is like a good moment to kind of shout out somebody like nick Merckx, you know because i feel like he's been doing it for so long and like yo he's been able to keep going and keep growing mm -hmm. and keep building just from gaming yeah, you know, you look well, at these other people like SQC or Aiden Ross or some people who like maybe once were big at, with the gaming, but then they ended up going towards that viral style mm -hmm. of content, that reaction content, that just chatting content, that walk the fine line content. And then you got somebody like Nick Merckx, who's like, you know, year eight, year nine. And like now he's doing I know his recent twist over the past like year, let's call it or so was to get him big into Apex and start that whole like pro scream and like content creator to like you know competitive player kind of vibe so you know kind of to add on to what this says there definitely are some creators that are still out there doing that thing and and you know kind of doing it the old school way but it's definitely interesting to look at how much the platform has drastically changed over the past couple of years when it comes to that mm -hmm. viral or discoverability to loop this whole conversation in yep the, I mean, the big thing to think to understand about that is like once you become a massive, like one of the biggest of the big streamers on Twitch, then the discoverability goes through the roof. This, uh, so Twitch and a lot of different Very things -heavy in life follow a Pareto distribution. If yep. you if you don't know what a Pareto distribution is, it's where you'll see the graph. Actually, let me see. Let me see if I can show this on stream right now. Um. Oh, here we are. Boom, right there. So a Pareto distribution, right? It has every, this would be like the massive streamers are right here, right? And and then what will you'll see is that it's gonna greatly slope down and then flatten out and then boom, you got like the vast majority of people that are streaming right here. This is, this is the people right here that, you know, they made it to 400 viewers or something, right? And then boom, like then you'll see like, is you go higher and higher and higher. You, once you become one of the biggest streamers on the platform, right that's how everything's going to be distributed across twitch what happens is you're at the top of every category you stream in so any category you stream in if it's the most hyped game everybody that's going in there sees your stream right at the bat they click on your stream so it's they call it the you know kingmaker system it follows a Pareto distribution and so the thing is once you become one of the most massive streamers on this platform you don't have any problem with this discoverability it's like the biggest the big streamers the massive streamers will get 90 percent plus of the discoverability 
right? And like we're talking a select group of people, the people that get to the point where they can hold like a 7,000 plus uh, yes. viewership, right? And really even more so like 10,000 plus. Those people, they, they get 90% plus of the exposure on the platform. And then everybody else after that is fighting over the last 10%. That's how this – that's how it, Twitch works. So it's, once – It's uh, like the resume effect. You know, like you said, when you go to a channel, how likely are you to like scroll down and pick somebody that's not inside the top five? You know, mm -hmm. and they say like with the resume, you got like five seconds. You know, they got to read the first one. And I, I feel like it's the same thing when it comes to these types of channels. Like you said, you click in like 95 percent of people are just going to boom, click on that first one, first two, first three. Like they're not going to scroll all the way down and pick like a random person. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that 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 whole top down, like, you know, the the big dog is going to keep eating, you know, when when everybody else is just kind of jumping up for the the little, you know, the scrap, the table scraps. Right. Exactly. Uh, I lost your your cam over here as well. Oh, did okay. Sometimes I've seen this happen with the guest star. It might pop back in in a second, but let me see. This was happening the other day. It says day. waiting for a guest to connect. Well, let me try this again. Let me jump back in one sec. Maybe I accidentally closed out something here. Oh, I might have messed up. It's okay. Good. You should see me back there now. Yeah, you can yeah. probably push. I think Slide I did exit that out. My apologies. No, you're good, dog. You're dog. You're good. <laughs> there it is boom let's see all right back. we back we back we back you know i was gonna say it was funny because i know like we're also talking some some ufc today too it's like man the more that i think about it, it it's kind of funny like when you talk about other websites it's like dude twitch is like the ufc right and oh, all yeah. the other well, websites are like bellator pfl and when you look at it it's like you know pfl has this million dollar tournament kicks got the 90 10 ufc's got mm -hmm. this whole fighter pay problem twitch you know same yeah kind of well thing. so like it's interesting when you're the top dog well something you have things you know go oh yeah it. you got the floor well something you if people don't understand a predator distribution the vast vast majority of things almost like everything follows a predator distribution the biggest of the big dogs in any industry will get like 90 percent of the opportunities the following like people after that or fighting over like the final 10%. And that happens in any industry. Look at music, mm -hmm. look at UFC, any sport, football, baseball. The the biggest, the big dogs get the vast majority. The top 10% of players are making 90% of the money. The rest is going across the, the bottom, right? That's how anything works. It works the same thing in business. The biggest of the big businesses, mm -hmm. right? Like Amazon, Apple, all, I mean, they are making like 10 per, or they're making like 80% of the revenue that is spent out there. They're 80% of the money that's spent in the economy is going to the biggest of businesses. And then after that, it's spread across like the bottom 80% or fine over the last 20. It happens. This is the same. It happens in everything. Yeah, it's, it's like stocks too. You know, the stock market one day could be plus or minus if Tesla has a good day or if Apple has a good day, you right. know, because like you said, these companies have such a large control and a hold on certain things that like so much fluctuates just based off of their you know performance or whatever you want to call it uh-huh so it's uh it's re really interesting i don't n know like if twitch ever will be able to solve like that problem it seems like tiktok has something like that it's just because it like it just injects people into the top you know, it's like where it's like just at a random, it's like, it's going to pick this person. And for these, like this day, we're going to throw them up here and see how thing go, uh, things go. So it's really weird how, uh, are they trying to motion to ban TikTok again in the States or something I like mean, that? If I saw correctly, yeah, I've heard that. I don't, I don't think it's going to be that long. I bet it doesn't. Yeah. It, it probably wouldn't even go through if I had to guess. Mm, but I don't like, know. I, I think did, they I, might ban it. Yeah. You think it might go through I, I'm just thinking it? of how things work nowadays. Like TikTok's a huge... It's not – I don't think it's oh, just what they talk about. It's, okay, so somebody's let me know in chat that it, there might be a little news foolery going on. Apparently, it's only on federal phones. Uh-huh, okay. So I guess they don't want any federal employees right. having TikTok. Maybe that ties into the whole um, ideology that it's well, spyware, It's banned on government devices right now, but they're trying to do something even more with that, I think. Oh, okay. And okay, it wouldn't so surprise me because, not. I mean, it's a, TikTok's like a huge threat to – different companies out there so a lot of companies oh, and no special doubt. interests have a big interest in trying to take tiktok down so 
Um, and, what, and I'm not, I'm not saying on either side like this what I agree every with. So often. I'm just saying like this is yeah. way bigger than just oh we're worried we're about this neutral. taking people's people's data. This is way bigger than that. This is about this is about monopoly is what yeah, a is big the, part of the this larger is about as well. forces in the world getting disrupted a little bit and they uh -huh. don't like that. Yeah, you know exactly. We're, we're, exactly. We're, listen, we're, we're here. We're, we're gonna we're gonna critically think on things, but we're gonna stay neutral. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Oh, see, now this just happened. I just lost you now. <laughs> I, <laughs> Good old I accidentally, it should, maybe it comes you back. Did what, it should come back. Oh, right? yep, you're back. You're yeah, back. I accidentally yep, yep. refreshed I it. What I, did. I accidentally refreshed <laughs> it over there. Yep, yep. All right. Dude. Huh. All right, and then, all right, so we got, uh, let, let's, we, we, I think we did. F final, good there. final we'll thing on something. that, final thing on that. Do you, yeah, how, how long do you think it is, like, kicks going to last? Just, like, give me a number. How many years? You think they make it all the way? They're around for about two years, ooh, three years? Like, what do you think? Ooh, ooh. Well, considering that now it's already been a thing for like maybe three, four months, I say from here on out right now, I give them until like the end of the year, pretty much. I, I, I don't, unless something crazy changes over the next like six months, I just, I don't even, like, I think in a year from now, people won't even be talking about it. The only thing that makes me doubt that though is the connection that they have with train wrecks uh -huh. and his ability to like he's a pretty viral guy i feel uh -huh. like on social media so like if he chooses to keep talking about it and being involved with it i feel like it it, it will inevitably be like around but i don't know if it's going to be as much as like a contender right come the end of the year you know i think by the end of this year we see if it's the real deal or if it's just another you know somebody trying to take advantage of 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 an opportunity within the industry or something like that yep but yes, yeah, so I, I say I say I'll give it another nine months, so pretty much a year from its inception, before I think it either goes up or down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, Let's just, give it like a year. Here. I'll give it like a year and a half from now. Yeah, about the same kind of timeline, because uh, I think by then they'll start getting hit pretty hard by operating costs if they don't start getting more of a like an influx because like it's even great for you to like you were talking about it before and just to touch on this one last time before we maybe pivot here but like i don't even do, do they run ads on kick so like for instance i look at this guy rothstein he's got 10k viewers on the slots like if he's running ads for them with 10k viewers i mean maybe they're making money but if they're not running ads like how are they even going to make money in the first year if it's not just all based on like the subs like you said so mm -hmm. i don't know Maybe Snake just said, like, here's 40 million and we're just going to piss it away on this website or something like that. Maybe. You know what I mean? Maybe. I, I don't know, but it seems weird unless they're doing something right now that, like, it's just a sunk cost that's going to just get more expensive as time goes on. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, I don't next know. thing I wanted to, to bring up, too, was to kind of pivot and keep it within the gaming stuff is uh, all right. So, you know, PUBG talked about it a lot. This big part of this is past and, and, hmm. and, and career. It seems like, you know, a lot of stuff has been going on with them to kind of set the, like, to preface the scenario. There was an article that came out from a news company. Um, I don't know exactly where it was, but apparently Crafton, the company behind PUBG or the new owner of PUBG, um, is having a lot of financial issues right now. And they have started, like, letting people go that are work from home freezing salaries, cutting prize pools for esports, etc. Do you think that this type of behavior signal like it kind of signals that like this is the beginning of the end or do you think that this is a potential readjustment for them to possibly succeed again? Um I don't think there's any way this is due to the fact that they're not financially successful i think that this is just a, a thing that's going on right now in many different companies very true and the industry a lot there there's a lot of companies and different things especially in gaming that are cutting people and pulling back you've seen this with orgs you've seen mm -hmm. there's there's a whole lot of stuff going on so i it's would imagine worldwide. it's You're more not wrong. that than oh they're like in big trouble because i mean they had PUBG mobile right I mean, they made mm -hmm. they've made so much money off of some of these games that they've had. Like PUBG Mobile is like still one of the most popular mobile games in the world, right? And yeah, and it still just says that in the last quarter, that, so. quarter quarter four of twenty twenty two that they did have three hundred and seventy five million U S dollars in sales. So that yeah. was just at the end of last year. So when you look at that, I mean, now I understand that it's a lot of 
a lot of money, you know, to run something like this. But, you know, like apparently the summary of 2022, they try to say that the revenue was 1.4 billion. Mm -hmm. You know, so like if you look at this at that, it seems like they're succeeding. And maybe like you said, it's kind of like a worldwide thing right now that everybody's just kind of trimming up a little bit. Yeah, because, there's a know, lot of companies are trying to do that right now. They're trying to trim are getting up a little bit. Things are getting a little bit crazy <clears throat> out there. I will say and somebody did bring up a interesting point as I've had this discussion a few times in the past that Crafton has released two games since PUBG and uh -huh. both of them have struggled immensely. What, um, what games were those? So I can't remember the one name of one of them, but the biggest one would have been the Callisto Protocol. Well, so right. I think that a lot of people could could suggest that the Callisto Protocol was actually a massive flop. I mean, well, they hired Glenn Schofield, who uh, was the creator of or the head developer of Dead Space. They they specifically brought him on to to lead the charge on this game they opened up a brand new studio they hired like Callisto protocol wasn't just like we're gonna make this game under our current banner they they opened up a whole new division to make this game and Interesting. Uh, an all-time peak players of this game that was like clearly funded heavily was 15,000 that's it right and like the concurrent players at the exact moment are 170 right so I, I just looked are... something up that says craft and expected Callisto protocol to sell 5 million copies this year but now puts that figure at around 2 million which it admits still will not be easy yeah so, so you know like you know they, they projected they, they, 5 who... million and the instead they're gonna go 2 million like maybe uh, who knows though like, because even though like people would say battlefield uh, the last Battlefield that released was a flop, yes, right? They they still were like super profitable off of Battlefield, from my understanding. So, even though they didn't like do as good as they would have liked, they still made a ton of money off of Battlefield because so many it's a, such a well known, popular name that so many people still bought it. So I agree, and I, I think that too that like, kudos to Battlefield because like it was bad when it came out, but gosh, I think that they've. Uh, from what I've heard, they've been slowly improving it. So, like, at, at least right. there's some sort of, like, uh Well, there's a reason they're still there, working on but... it, right? It's because it was, like, actually profitable for them. If it would have been just, like, terrible, they would have scrapped yeah, it. Yeah, they probably would have scrapped whatever. it and moved next. Yeah, so... especially being a big company like that, right? But, yeah, I don't know. So, yeah, that's been the... That was kind of like the newer gaming news that we had that was, like, uh in terms of, like, the, the PUBG firing or whatever, but... Other than that, like you said, I think it's more like an industry-wide thing, and it's probably something mm -hmm. that we'll see continue happen across the board, ranging, like you said, from esports companies to game companies. I mean, dude, you're talking about esports. Dude, I'm pretty uh, – what's that one? The Guard or whatever? Like, I've seen a couple firings, a couple let goes here, yeah, but then that big one, The Guard or whatever. Uh, dude, everybody, like, was out or something. Like, they have no employees left or something like that. They just have esports players and, like, the owner. So it's like weird, you know, like some companies have definitely been going through some like massive replacements in terms of that stuff. So mm -hmm. just part of the other times, I guess. All right. The conversation of the hour, the UFC 285 rundown. Right. Your, I mean, obviously, I think a lot of us are excited to see the John Jones return. But are there any other fights on the pay-per-view or the card that are sticking out to you that you're excited to see or uh yeah I'll you know any picks from this like what are we, what are we thinking What's um the i'll definitely we should go over the fights that we're like excited for but i don't okay. i don't know if i want to jump too much into like the lower card fights all that much yeah yeah right. no no honestly um, the only er the only early prelim i'd love to talk about is ian gary yeah you, you, because ian gary is kind of like he's, he's that like, up and coming you know yeah, he's in that up and comer class right now with like Bo Nickel and and Patty Pimblet yep. and you know like he's in that he's like that true freshman kind of vibe like oh yep. he's the future. Do you, do you think he gets it done? I mean I don't really know much um, about his opponent Keenan Song. I yeah, yeah, I don't I don't know a lot about Song either. It looks like Song is he's fairly decent. He's got he's about 50 50 wins. in his career in the UFC. It's looking like yeah he's he's and the two better fighters he's fought like max griffin he got knocked out by and then he got knocked out by uh or he lost to alex morono so who knows like he seems yeah. to be like a good test for this fight so you, you think gary gets it done here and, well, and keeps that forward projection gary is a is someone that uf the ufc sees that could be a potential star mm -hmm. in the future so they're gonna definitely be trying to build him i don't think they're gonna give him for a sure. matchup where they're like 
don't think that he could win it, you know. And that's not to say they're going to give him easy matchups or anything. But I think at this stage of his career, where it's still really early, I don't think they're like going to be really giving him a, like an insane challenge at the uh, the start. Yes. Which, I mean, this guy's nineteen and six, so he's definitely no no pushover, right? But yeah, I, I think they're no expecting can. Gary to probably get it done. Um, and I I agree. Yeah, I, I he like definitely could. He, he reminds me almost of like a like an Adesanya style, you know, like or not like. He's he's a really good striker and he he's got that personality and everything. It, probably not to the same level as uh, Adesanya, but I, I think Gary is definitely going to be a pretty good sized star in the UFC in the coming years. He's got the and, and being Irish, you know, and, and and I think when everybody hears him talk on the post fight mic, they get that little bit of feeling of like the OG McGregor on the mic yep. when he was yep. young and the, the accent and the pronunciation and the uh-huh. striking. Like I know in some of his earlier fights, he has been compared like to that next coming of, of McGregor of the Irish uh, MMA fighter. So I, I'm definitely excited to see him get back in action this weekend against uh, against Sog. And, and I do think that he probably gets it done just like you said. I don't think that the UFC is scripted, but I do think that they have enough fighters on their roster now where they do do matchmaking and they're not going to give this guy who's a future star they're, they don't do what they did eight years ago you know they're not feeding guys to the wolves they're not giving guys the kevin mm-hmm. lee treatment anymore you know what I mean? <laughs> they're, they're giving them the o'malley treatment you know they're like they're, they're they're setting these guys up to get better and to learn rather than just being like we're gonna just you know nub your career right off the bat you right know? so i agree with that take too i think gary gets it done and just to st- asterisk it just because i know these guys from watching previous fights they're not big names but that man of martinez cameron simon bantamweight fight is going to be an absolute barn burner so if you need some good early entertainment before that gary fight make sure you peep that one. Oh wait is this like good. one of the earliest fights yeah, so that so Mana Martinez like, and Cameron uh, Samen yeah, is what you're Simon, saying. Sa- oh, Simon, yeah, uh-huh. Simon. I don't know how you say it. Right. If, if anyone's South African in the chat, maybe they could help because he's a South African fighter. He trains with Duplessis. Mm-hmm. Um, there we go. There, he's been looking <coughs> really good lately. So that should be an absolute scrap. That that should be like a finish fight for sure. Um, all right, let's jump. Did you let's hear jump. about Duplessis and the, what he was saying? I'm pretty uh, sure that he was saying that he sees himself being like a star in the UFC, like the size of like Adesanya in the future, and he's like gonna take yeah, over the division. Yeah, he's very confident. He's uh-huh. very confident, and 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 his last fight against Darren Till was like awkward. Like yeah. he came out and it looked like he was gonna just get Till out of there. He couldn't finish Till. He got a little gas. Till made the comeback in round three, and then eventually he finds the finish or in round two, and then eventually he finds the finish in round three. But it was a little awkward. I think he got gas there. Uh-huh. And like talk about another fight. This uh, you know him versus Blonde Brunson. We got yep. Blonde. We got Blonde, <laughs> Blonde Brunson, Brunson. Blind Squirrel Lats. Like his way. Like his, he's always posting these pictures, bro. The guy's lats are mm-hmm. are, 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 are he, he could fly. I feel like if he jumped off uh, off a building, he could glide with lats like that, man. I don't know, but the, what's what's your takes on Derek Brunson? Like, uh, is yeah. he is he Dude, washed? Does he, he have another run in him? He looked like shit against Cannoneer. Yeah, I, I I don't remember his very last fight, but I know the fights before that. Like he was starting to look pretty. Like he was starting to look better. Like he looked like he caught a second wind. Yeah, um, yeah, he was. But I'm I'm looking right now like Brunson at this point he's 39 bro he's getting towards the end of his career oh. I mm-hmm. there this is a like a setup fight for Duplessis is exact is what it is is Brunson's yes. a name gatekeeper fight. yeah this exactly Brunson's a name and they believe that Duplessis can if Duplessis wins this it's gonna add to like his resume and it's gonna add to his his hype right and so I I see that that's like the, probably the reason that they set this fight up. Uh, Duplessis, uh, just to kind of go into what he said at this point in his career, like with his current skill level, you were saying like how he fought against Darren Till, he's yeah. probably going to be able to get to like be a top 10 guy, but if he doesn't, he needs to improve still quite a bit. If he he's going to end up being the champ, like he's still got a lot to improve on. Um, uh, straight up though, I see Duplessis probably getting the win over Brunson here. And yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. And I definitely for that fight, like I definitely don't see it going the distance. I mean, Brunson has had massive gas tank issues in the past, as has Duplessis. Both of these guys are wrestlers. So I don't think you're going to see like Derek Brunson versus Kevin Holland style where he just takes him down over and over and over and over. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I think I think Duplessis could get that done. And I think that's definitely a fight that probably doesn't see the judges just kind of based on those guys is uh, past. I don't know too much about his opponent. Any any take on no love coming back, coming back in? Can, can can he get back on the saddle? Apparently, 
he revealed that b before his last fight against Kaikar France, where he got KO'd in the first round, that he like got a divorce and had to sell his house like one week before the fight. Damn, so apparently I'm sure that he's coming. Happen. Yeah, he's coming back in with some more mental clarity. It's been a two-year break for him. He hasn't fought since December of 2021. Dude, no I love can start it again. I would. I would how old is he right do? now? Do he's thirty? Uh, dude, I would like to see. I would really like to see it. I'd like to see him go on that run. I, I personally, I, I, I like Cody Go uh, Garbrandt. I know he's kind of like okay. pol polarizing for some people out there, but I, I think I do like Cody Garbrandt. I think he's a he is a good dude. Um. I would like to see it. I just don't know. Like it, it's such a toss up. I don't. I. I does he have the potential? Uh, the, the, what Cody shows up, you know. Yeah, it's, dude. If it's dude Garbrandt that fought against uh God, throw me his name. The champ off the top of my head does the commentary. I can't think right now. Oh, Cruz. Yeah, Dominic dude, Cruz. Dominic Cruz, yeah, bro. Yeah, 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 the yeah. Garbrandt that fought against Dominic Cruz was like he was insane in that fight. Mm -hmm. He looked mm -hmm. untouchable, bro. He looked mm -hmm. like he, it was the, such a dominant fight over Cruz, and no one had done anything like that to Cruz for so long. Like, he took Cruz's freaking god card from him, bro. C Cruz was just dominating people, and C Garbrandt freaking whooped him. And, I mean, if that Cody Garbrandt, like, shows up, it, like, something happened mentally with him after that, man. I, like, when he – because wasn't it he fought Cruz, and then after that he had the fight with Dillashaw? Yeah, yeah, and back, I the back swear that like shot, something that did both. something to him, bro. Like mentally, he yeah. it mentally took something from him that he, yeah, did he just didn't have that both. same swagger. And then he got knocked out by by I poke Munoz, and then he had that nutty at the clock knockout of Asanuko. Uh -huh. where he like threw that dipping right. haymaker and yep. knocked him out with one second left. Uh -huh. And then yeah, then it's just been loss, loss. Yeah, now he's back two year layoff. So I think it's somebody says in chat and I agree good for the sport if Cody wins. Uh -huh. I think that's one of those guys where a lot of people are like, dang, like you said, when you watch him at that one part, you saw that he had it. You know right. what I mean? So he it'd had be it nice sure. to see him get back on the on the on the horse there and get back in the W column. I agree. Dude, right, I, I'm, what, I'm looking at right now. Holy crap. I'm looking at it. Let me see. Holy crap. Six. Dude, he is on a six-fight losing streak, bro. So Cody? he, yes, he beat Cruz, right? After mm -hmm. he fights Cruz, he fights Dillashaw for the first time, loses yep. second-round KO, fights him again for, uh, for he fought him again after that rematch, uh, first round He's KO, He's getting right? Out. Yeah. Munoz, first Not round KO, out. right? Uh, he actually he no, he beats Rafael Sunsau, right? He beats Rafael Sunsau, but then he goes Kaikara France. KO'd first round. Rob Font loses Jeez. a five round decision after that. So he's actually in the last six fights, he's one in five. And his losses in those, one was a decision, the rest were knockouts. So shit, dude. Th this is tough. It would be a hell of a comeback story. Like imagine Cody wins this and he goes on a, a stretch. I, I don't know if he can do it, but yeah. man, I, that would. Be crazy. Now he's down at flyweight again. Or no, actually, this fight's at Bantamweight. Okay, so he is back at Bantamweight. Okay, I wasn't sure if he was fighting at Fly or Bantam. Okay, so he's mm -hmm. back to Bantam too. Yeah, I, I think I think I think they gave him an opponent that he can get it done again. So maybe maybe he could get a little confidence booster this weekend, and then maybe we see another another uh, a no love run there for for Garbrandt. That that would be great. I, I agree. Yeah, I all right. I'm honestly, I think this is a. You know what I think this is? I think this is like a cut fight where. Whoever doesn't Someone's win getting is cut. getting cut. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's what this is right here. Speaking of cuts, they cut Darren Till, but apparently it wasn't because of <coughs> them releasing him, but he asked the UFC to be released so he could take care of a couple things, and then he'll make a – we'll see a Darren Till return story, I'm sure, within the huh. next year or so. I wonder if he but just goes somewhere else cuts, and fights either. for someone else. I, I don't think that's I mean, you look at someone like is, Darren so. Till, that's, some, that's another one of those guys who they didn't give the O'Malley treatment. I mean, like, they no, fed no. that man to the wolves right yeah. off the bat. And, like, he wanted he's it, one of those young fighters good. who is damn good, but I don't think had the maturity and the mental yeah, yet I to think handle that's what some of right. those losses early in his career. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of held him back from moving forward. Um, all right, well, the talk of the hour outside of John Jones on the 285 main uh, main card is got to be, without a doubt, Mr. Penn State, Mr. Nash Bo Nickel. Mm -hmm. National Champ, Mr. Bo Nickel, who is, without a doubt, getting a tuner fight yeah. against, against Jamie Pickett. This is Pickett. definitely I mean, a, a builder fight, isn't it? Jamie Pickett 
yeah, oh my God, without a doubt. Two lo- he's Damon coming off Pickett of two is losses. pretty un- unknown in the UFC. Uh-huh. I mean, 13 and 8. He's fought a couple decent people, but he's uh, he's one of those guys who I think a lot of people even wondered, how did he make it in to the UFC? And I think it's because that middleweight division is a little light sometimes. Yeah. Uh, but Bo Nickel, I mean, he said it in the presser last night, first round. I think he might he might walk out there and get it done within a minute, this. Just like he did on Contender Series. I don't know. Do you think Jamie Pickett can can even hold off the first takedown? Like, I don't know because by finish, you think or what? Pro- yeah, I, I bet he gets, I bet he gets a finish. I don't know if it'll be first. I don't. I haven't watched Jamie Pickett really fight. That I'm, I'm sure he's always been like pretty early undercard. I'm looking at his record right now. He's tall. He's you know, big guy. Fought reach. five times in the UFC and he's lost four and won one. So definitely, I think yeah. this is a builder fight for uh, Bo coming in here and i mean he's got a ton of hype behind him this is one of those things where it's kind of what we just talked about with uh with gary, gary. they're mm-hmm. gonna try to build up bo nickel he could be a big star for the ufc coming up in the future so this should be probably a pretty easy fight for him i just, i don't know exactly how i see it getting done i'd seen his contender fights uh fight but outside of that we really haven't seen bo nickel fight because he's got a three and zero record he's barely ever fought exactly. when it comes to and his this. other fights for 30 seconds so we didn't even get to see anything you know yeah. he ran in he double legged him Right, you know, and right into the takedown. See you later. Right, and I I like wrestling, but I I haven't really watched. I don't really watch wrestling at all uh, when it comes to yeah when it comes yeah. to collegiate yeah right? when it comes like, to collegiate yeah. wrestling. So I've heard, we've only heard game. about his accolades. So we'll we'll and you see don't what happens. Worry about getting knee in the face in a re- in a collegiate wrestling match yeah. either. You know, Very so it always changes true. when you change when you change your realm. It, you know, some things change with that too. But I, I largely agree. Tuner fight. Mr. Bo Nickel probably going to pull. I see a very Kamzat esque victory here against Jamie Pickett. Like I think we see a Kamzat versus the Leech style of victory. Like he's gonna do something crazy. He's gonna go in there and like duplex this guy over by the commentators while talking to him, you know, and like sink in a submission. Like mm-hmm. I-, I could see it being something ridiculous like that. This lightweight fight though, after this Bo Nickel debut, man, I am super excited for this one. Matus Gamrat is a great fighter, coming off of a very you know tough loss against Benil Dariush, who is no you know opponent to be ashamed of to losing to. And he even said it last night because oh, I did watch the press watch conference that. a little bit. That was bit. a good fight. He, it was the dude, the gra- the like I don't. As somebody who likes grappling and 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 the rolling and the wrestling, but not a huge fan of it, I'd rather see striking. I was mesmerized by the that by is the, good a good grappling dude, fight. The, the transitions between the two of them while they were grappling was insane. Like one had the takedown, one rolled out. Oh, then he's in the top. Then this guy's on the t- and it was just nuts. Like you could see that those were two like it was true craftsmanship between those two. But dude, this guy that he's fighting, Jalen Turner, mm-hmm. is like no joke at lightweight. Like ex uh, welterweight who's moved down the lightweight mm-hmm. and since he's moved down the lightweight is just on a tear because the guy's fucking six foot two yeah he's six two he's freaking you know 77 jacked. inch reach yeah. like he, he he's already you know uh, he starts fitting into that category of like even a weight bully you yeah know, he's for sure a weight from, bully from 175 and fighting at 155 and the one thing that I think could be really bad for Matus Gomrod in this fight is that uh Jalen Turner has like a, a handful of submissions that started from a takedown like he was getting takedown and you know how it goes with these tall guys like mm-hmm. they got the legs they got the arms yeah like, dude they'll throw that guillotine, that guillotine in, in on, a, or on a five foot eight opponent too you know like gomrod small and jalen turner's fight name is like the tarantula i not because of his style i think he actually has a sick obsession with tarantulas i've okay. seen him upload pictures where he like loves like he collects them or something oh but, man <laughs> he kind of like I see a fight like that. Like Matus Gamma gets a takedown. Jalen Turner uses the length and yep. either like yep. sinks in a submission or might even finishes him. But it's hard to see Matus Gamma losing a fight after his fights against Sukari and then Dariush because like he's really fucking good. Yep. I think I think you put it really good there. Fight. I think you put it really good there. Um I realistically it's bad for him too. Yeah. You know? uh, I I could see I I, I don't really know. I just know both these guys are really solid. I, this is gonna be like one of those fights for me where I like really get to see, yeah, like what the these guys are like made of. You know, this is where you mm-hmm. really like okay, this is how good this guy is because these are two really good, uh, really good fighters here going into this one. All right, then we got number we got the next uh, three. This would be 
your like third prospect. I don't know if you could really call him a prospect anymore because he has a couple fights within the UFC and he just coming off of a, a pretty quick work of Neil Magny. Uh -huh. uh, but Shavkat Rachmanov, who has been definitely hidden in the shadows of Kamzat Chimaev, we have Shavkat uh, Rachmanov here, who I believe is from Kazakhstan and is an absolute animal, mm -hmm. but got hands of steel in front of him. Jeff Neal, who mm -hmm. was the first man to uh, knock out Vincent of uh, Vincente Luque mm -hmm. in his last fight and has looked like his career has been getting better, um, but lost to Neil Magny, who just got right. dominated by Shavkat. So I think it's a hard fight for Jeff Neal. I think this is a, a test for Shavkat, but man, I think he's going to probably walk right through him do you, you think jeff neal can take take him to the distance or i i can't really because i don't i can't i can't remember like watching many of uh rachmanov's fights i yeah, miss i missed the last too. one against uh magni and then mm -hmm. when it comes to some of these other ones like i don't i just don't remember like i think that these are one of those things where i probably just like ended up missing a lot Even of these fights jeff or maybe neal, i've seen like a one and it was fighter. like years ago uh-huh uh, Jeff Neal, though, like I've I've seen enough his fights. The dude's got hands. He's got really great striking. And he he, he he's yeah. been a he's been a guy that has a lot of potential in the UFC ever since he's come into it, and I think he still does. So, uh, definitely a very good opponent for Rachmanov. So we'll see if Rachmanov just runs through this guy. You're gonna see Rachmanov probably head towards the very top of the division. Yep, I definitely agree with that. I think Jeff Neal, just to gas him up a little bit, I don't know if it'll matter against somebody of Rachmanov's talent, but mm -hmm. I do think he boasts a very good takedown percentage defense of like 85% or something like that. And when you look at Jeff Neal's catalog, like he's fought some like really good fighters and like some fairly decent wrestlers, you know, like he has a decision win over Bilal Muhammad. You know, one of the best wrestlers in the welterweight division. You know what I mean? Like, he, he's, he's staved off some good wrestlers and grapplers like Vicente Luque before. So, we'll see if maybe that could help him. But I, I think that largely he, he definitely has his hands full in this matchup because Shavkat's one of those guys who has it all. He's got the strikes. He's got the grappling. He's got the jujitsu. You know, that's going to be a tough one for, for Neil. But I, I would love to see him kind of test Shavkat. Like, Maybe we see a Kamzat Gilbert Burns style of fight here. Maybe not. Maybe he gets starched real quick. But I, I would love to see a little prospect get tested by the veteran kind of guy, you know, for the for the for the for the audience. Um, cool little like before we just move on here. Cool little fact yeah, yeah. about uh, Jeff Neal. I don't know if this is still the case, but I had like I was like, is this the guy that I remember hearing him say this? In his spare time when he's not training, he works as a. Uh, he works as a restaurant server so that he lays him he's like in the grind where he's making he, in his spare time when he's not fighting he goes and works at the restaurant and whatnot and is a server and so he can pay his bills and on his like way his dream to try to make it to the top of the ufc and make it as a a fighter so that was something Dude, that i thought was crazy yeah i thought that was something that Isn't was pretty that crazy? Uh, pretty cool to think you imagine you go out to the pay eat, structure and then Jeff like, Neal yeah. is your waiter like out of nowhere. That'd be wild. You know, I ain't comparing uh, uh, LeBron James to Jeff Neal. Obviously very different. You'd kind of need to maybe do like McGregor to LeBron. But like, Mood, imagine seeing like a seventh man on an NBA roster, like waiting tables. Like that shit just wouldn't fucking happen. You yeah. know, like I understand the whole fight structure show when, you know, the more pool you have, the more money you make. I get it. I get it. Right. Like, do it if you gotta do another job like that's just nuts now i get it. if you want to do it because you like it i think that's like a darren elkin style he is like a union guy but like definitely makes decent money from fighting but like i think just does the union thing because that's like him you know uh, like blue right, collar right, like right. bryce mitchell he does yep. the whole farming thing all the yep. time and then he fights you know and he training for fighting when he's not fighting i think barbara is like that too so some of them do just like to do it because they like to do it mm -hmm. but like you said if you got to do it to pay bills man come on ufc throw the throw this guy some cash like Maybe he gets a outrageous. crazy but win maybe, over Rachmanov and they give him a flipping right? 50 grand performance Catap bonus or something. Yeah. Catapult him, I mean, you know what? <laughs> so that, that's good. That, this is know. the thing. This that, is it. That shows he's got that dog in him. Yeah, dude. Know? I mean, this is the opportunity right here, too, though, for him. Like, you go out there, you fucking start to Rachmanov, guess what? You're probably getting paid after that. You know, mm -hmm. that's, that's definitely getting a little 50k so. performance bonus. That's a fact, Jack. You ain't got to have to wait any tables if you, clean, if you bring home that performance bonus, you know? All right, this next what's your what's your 20 seconds thought on 
the flyweight, the women's flyweight. Yeah, flyweight. I don't even think we need to make this one very long because, yeah. like, I, I, I don't. I mean, I think it's 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 Shevchenko by any way she wants. I mean, Basically, I don't even think that yeah. Alexa Grasso has really even beaten anybody that great, with the exception of a, a a good win over Macy Barber a couple years ago. Yeah, I mean, she's not bad by any means, but like when you look at the the people she's fought, like her last two fights are Viviana Rujo and Joanne Wood, and like both of those ladies are fantastic fighters, but they're not title contenders yeah. they're not title calendar like alexa grasso isn't talia santos right you know what i mean or like one of these crazy fighters so shevchenko by any way she yeah freaking sees fit in my opinion yeah. uh but i think like most fights like probably that one will probably you know get going in round two i'd imagine so i don't think yep. that valentino does anything crazy like first round but without a doubt she takes home that dub yeah, maybe maybe if she like knocked her out or something in the first round, that you could see yeah, something, like something that, but... crazy like a head kick kind of vibe. We have seen Shevchenko log a couple of those, but I, yeah, I think Alexa Grasso should probably survive at least one round. See, so this is I, I uh, start round two. That's something going down. Shevchenko just starting to run into the problem that she's so good that she's already beat like everybody in the division. Yeah. So at this point, it's just yeah. like, all right, well, I guess. We'll just try Grasso in there, like throw her in. Let's see what happens. Uh, Dude, so. it's getting closer and closer to like Moreno and Fig and Figgy. Like that, uh -huh. I feel like they need to do with Shevchenko and Nunez at this point. You yeah, know? like I would the only difference that. is Nunez obviously to losing to Pena the other the other year. But right. outside of that, yeah, it seems like those two are the only ones that'll push it to him. But I will say, Valentina, Talia Santos, that was a close fight, man. That was a very mm -hmm. close fight, and I think that you know Talia Santos gets another take. She, maybe could come in and, and dethrone uh de dethrone that and then you got this aaron blanchfield i got a shout out aaron blanchfield somebody i went to high school with is her jujitsu coach that she's one of jersey's finest in the ufc and blanchfield is just an absolute monster you know i know andrade was light work for shevchenko but like you know blanchfield went out there submitted andrade so maybe she'll come up here in another yep. year or so and give valentina a run for her money yeah, but like i feel that. like we are effectively there too yeah. Shevchenko's just, as her name is, you know, the bullet, the dominator. She, uh, It'll be hard to dethrone her. She asked for that fight at the end of her last fight, too. And I don't know at this point if that's a good thing for the UFC yeah, to do Yeah, maybe yet. Russia. It's like, give her, give her, like, one more, give her, like, at least one more fight. Let her get, like, it's try to improve even more from where she's at currently. Because she's what? She's only, like, 23 or something, 23, 24. Oh, yeah, Aaron Blanchard She's, like, super, super young. young. Like, very, very help right build her a little bit more before you throw, in it, yep. uh, throw her in there against Shevchenko also. I mean, at that point, Shevchenko gets, Shevchenko. Shevchenko gets a little bit older too, you know? Um, and so Passing of the torch. Yeah, kind of vibe, yeah maybe, you know? we, maybe we see a little passing of the torch type action yep. goes on with Blanchard. Well, jersey so. swap. <laughs> possibly. You know, Shevchenko's All still right. a monster, so. The now the time the has come, events, ladies and gentlemen. John Jones. We need a Bruce Buffer. Uh, yeah, right. Like <laughs> it's time moment for right now. Like this, we need it. We need, Dude, did you we see need the soundboard the, right there? Man, the last pay per view where they were overseas, I saw in, uh, in the one in Perth. There was a they were doing a wine tasting and there was a wedding at the winery. And Bruce Buffer, good guy Bruce Buffer, went over and did a whole introduction for the groom. Oh, that's so and awesome! For free, that's so for free. awesome, bro. Somebody was oh like, my god, this guy's getting married. He's a huge UFC fan, and Bruce Buffer was like, "All right, give me the mic." And just oh, went sick. over there. And there's a video out there, and he was like introducing the groom. And I was like, "Dude, mm, what dude, a fucking guy!" That's Bruce so Buffer's sick. the fucking so man. Sick. But uh, uh, dude, right for this one, we need something like that because here it is: the the return of. Of, in my opinion, the GOAT of MMA, uh -huh. uh, John Bones for this. Jones, for this, man. three years, uh, yes, dude, me, me as well, the heavyweight return, it's official, and uh, man, I'm, I, I know you, we've talked about this before, you said he's still the same old guy at the end of the day, and I uh -huh. definitely agree, but this mental clarity we're seeing out of John Jones at, with the way he's talking and the way he's looking at things is, uh, is different. You know, it's uh -huh. interesting, uh, and I'm curious to see, like, what's going to happen when that octagon door closes. Yeah, um, man. When it, when, it when it comes to that specifically, I, I don't know. Like, I'll believe it when I see it for a long time. You know what I mean? Because John's had this in the past where, you know, he, he, he seems like he's gotten back on the path. You know, he's he's getting, he's <laughs> he's, he's uh, holding himself nice to a guys, higher yeah. standard all of this and then it's just like reformed, oh. reformed. it's like it's like almost it's like the opposite thing of like the boy who cried wolf right where it's like okay you you keep doing this enough times it's like i start to see what this is so now it's like hey man if you really want to change that reputation we need to see you be able to hold this together 
for like the rest of your career and then outside the octagon. Um, but 100%. I don't know if I see that happening. Now, when it comes to the fight, something very interesting that I had seen it put out there on social media, a quote from Cyril Gan. He said that when he doesn't have a fight, he doesn't train. He says yeah. he only trains when he's in a fight. Big yeah. thing about that is we saw Ngano expose the fact that, dude, Cyril just doesn't wrestling. have that much wrestling because Ngano's wrestling's not that good. It's not like Ngano's some all-American wrestler, wrestler you know? or something. Yeah, yeah. And then you throw him in there against John Jones, who out-wrestled like an Olympic wrestler in D.C., right? The, like D.C., probably the best uh, resume – in the history of the heavyweight division when it comes yeah. to wrestling, right? And John yeah, Jones the the still out-wrestled him. So you throw big John Jones in there against Cyril Gaon now, and I think he's just going to wrestle him to death. He's yeah, just going to wrestle him to death. They're really painting that narrative. Like, John, they, they, I saw the picture, like a top-down picture, a split-image picture, where, like, on the top it was a picture of John – I guess it was from Media Day or something. John Jones was, like, in his house watching Cyril Gaon fights, mm -hmm. and Cyril Gaon was in his house, like, playing FIFA. <laughs> so, like, they're, they're really trying to post this narrative that, like, yeah. John Jones is, like, calm, cool, collected, and laser-focused. Right. And Cyril Gaon is, like – the nonchalant, like, uh -huh. very, like, c'est la vie, like, you know, just, like, chill vibe, like. And I wonder, like, what, because we never really saw this narrative out of Cyril Gaon before this fight. And then when you watch his fights, like, especially his last fights against Tuivasa, like, dude, he was in there just lighting it up. So mm -hmm. it's like, I don't know if this is just for the media or if it really is that kind of style of fight or whatever. But, uh, man, it, it will be interesting to see if when that door closes – Will that narrative that's been painted really show a difference in the way that the fight goes? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, and I'm curious to see that. Like, huh? I, I the only thing I wonder is if like, yeah, the only thing I wonder is is like this 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 just the weight class change. You know, it, uh -huh. is John gonna struggle to take somebody down that naturally walks around at 260 pounds? I guess I don't even know what John is weighing in at for the fight. So it'll be interesting to see yeah. what he comes in on the scales today. Like, is he going to be 220? Is he going to be 240? Like, I don't even really exactly huh. know what he's weighing in at right now. So I bet he I'm weighs right about the same as gone at 245 is what I'm going to guess. I'm going to say okay, he, yeah, right at 245, there. 250, I bet is where he's going to come in at. Um, yeah, he's got to stick to that grappling elbow takedown game plan because if he gets into a kickboxing match, dude, Cyril yep. Gaon's kickboxing is phenomenal. Now, like John see, Jones that said is the one thing. Times last night, he said that Cyril Gaon's footwork is rare uh -huh. for a heavyweight. Oh, dude, like, he, he moves he around knows so good, it, you know. So he knows that, like, if he can't implement his strategy on him of the wrestling, that, like, yeah, dude, Cyril Cyril Gaon's not going to make it an easy night in the office for him there, but. I think that John Jones knows that's there, but I guess it comes down to when that door closes, does he deviate from the game plan? Do we see another Dominic Reyes style fight or does we uh -huh. see like a very strategic, like I'm here to make a, you know, a lesson. Yeah. Um, well, I get, we'll, we'll have to see here. The only, if gone can somehow stuff the takedowns, then actually I think gone has a really good chance. He has a winning. path. Yeah, he has a pretty good chance at winning this fight. If he can somehow stop the takedowns, it's just like going in my head. It's like Jones took down DC like multiple times. Like it was nothing like this. In my head, I'm just, I just don't see a path for Gon to stuff the takedowns. I just don't see it. I, I don't think it's going to be able to happen. So, Yeah, let's see. he's just got to hope that, that maybe that the weight difference could, make a, could, could maybe come into effect there. But I do agree. Like if John Jones gets the hands around him, it's – it's going to be tough, and, like, I really hope we see God not do that whole guard play and, like, just stand up. You know what I mean? I know it's so hard to say that, like, and there's all those memes where UFC fighters are like, when people just say stand up, you know, it's yeah. way harder than that because you got a guy out. And I get it. But, like, I, I want to see that Volkanovski urgency from Gon this weekend uh -huh. where his ass hits the mat. I want to see him getting his ass to the side of the cage, crawling back, you know what I mean, using these techniques and these strategies to – make it easier for you to return to your feet because that is what it's going to be for God on the yep. feet. The longer he's on the feet, the more of a chance he has to win the longer. He's on his ass more of a chance he has to lose, you know, yep. like it seems very cut and dry here. So I guess we'll see if the laser focused, very prepared John Jones can take out the under focus, shall we call it very lackadaisically <laughs> approaching as he's calling him serial gone. 
He's literally, and everyone's like, John, his name's not fucking <laughs> Cereal. Can you stop calling the guy Cereal? <laughs> I don't believe it's Cereal. I do believe it's some sort of like Surreal or uh-huh. something like that. Surreal gone. Yep. But John Jones is over there on press I'm day, sure he's like, yeah, Surreal gone looks, you know, he's impressive. I respect him. I'm like, sure he's doing like, that on John, purpose. That's funny. It's not, yeah, and that's everyone started saying. That's is so he funny. fucking just calling yeah. him Cereal yeah, on purpose? Yeah, he's doing it on purpose with him? for sure. Or he's is he just purpose. being an idiot? You know oh, what I mean? That's funny, man. But yeah, he's calling him Serial gone. So I guess we'll, 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 freaking, we'll freaking see tomorrow night, uh, whatever time it'll be, probably like 12.30 a.m. when those doors close. It's probably be the first time I stay up until 1 a.m to actually watch this fight and on saturday morning when i wake up with the baby at 6 30 i'm gonna be regretting it uh-huh. like, this is one of those moments as a Let's martial go. arts fan where like i yeah, will be up watch this you gotta until watch that fight ends because i need to see that and that arena is going to be fucking electric yeah when that You're man right. makes You're his right. walk it's make it wild. out like it's crazy like this is a very large mma moment i'm actually starting to get a little bit of a goose bump as mm-hmm. a big MMA fan like uh, this 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 is like this is going to be this like is almost watching, like, like Jordan coming back to play it like again in the NBA type thing it, it would it be something almost like, kinda that, like that you know, you know it's kind of wild to think about but that's almost what this is like I, I'm expecting like McGregor after Jose Aldo kind of vibe you know what I mean uh-huh. like just that swagger that style that hype like that fight like that Jose Aldo McGregor fight was so hot that walk out and come out seven seconds knock him out like yeah I, I definitely Definitely, like this will easily be one of the most hype moments in MMA history, and like easily one of the most hyped MMA moments in the past like ten years. So I, I, I'm super excited for that, and can't wait to see what freaking happens. Yep, same here, brother. This, my man. Well, that, was my man. that was a great. That was a great episode. Yeah, I feel like we had some great chats about you know the the streaming industry. Great MMA combo. Mm-hmm. That was that was a great way to start the the Friday, man. Thank you, brother. Yeah, this has been the Watch the Mic podcast, baby. That's right. Let them know, the Ham Beetle. T- tell them to watch the mics out there. Yeah, watch your damn mics out there. Uh, and make sure you watch uh-huh. it. Mr. TSM underscore Viz on Twitch. I'm Ham Beano 3 O's on Twitch as well. We're going to start getting this content posted out on some other platforms mm-hmm. so you guys can listen not only live, but also from the comforts of your car, office, cubicle, home, wherever it may be. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. This, I hope you have a great rest of your day, brother. What you got? Some more roller challenge in the pecs showing these boys who the boss is? Yeah, that's what? exactly what we're doing. What about you? What are you jumping into? My man, my man. I am going to – dude, I've been a little addicted to Escape from Tarkov, not going to lie. It's been a little times. It's a little slow. It's a little thing, but it's giving me that itch again. So I'm just happy to have a little uh-huh. bit of an itch again in gaming. I like it. So I, I like I, it. Honestly, I've been bouncing around, playing a couple different things, trying to do some of these, these talk shows. Well, just – diversifying man that that's been on my menu this year so it's coming with some ups and downs but i'm staying level-headed and and focused throughout it so you know we'll we'll, we'll see it through brother you know yep love that dude this much love man enjoy your weekend have a great day pack thanks for hanging out the merch is up on the shop along with the way better t-shirts if you need to let them know that you're just simply way better out here boom Got those up there. We got shirts, we got hoodies, we got hats, we got everything. All right, there's literally everything on the shop.